So you've completed uh, phase C, which was to produce the form to view the instructor. Now you're going to move on to phase D, which is all about producing a search screen. So it's a good idea at this point to save our database with a new file name so that we can go back to a previous stage if we need to. So let's do that. Uh, so we'll save as, and we're going to go for free D now. I'll enable the content. So what we're asked to do is produce a search screen. Potential learners need to be matched with a suitable instructor. And so we're going to have a search screen that will find those suitable instructors. OK, and we're going to have certain criteria that have got to go on there. So we're going to be filling in a form with these criteria, such as whether we want a male or female or any instructor. There needs to be a validation on the, on the screen. And there needs to be some other information, uh, including showing the number of instructors that are suitable and a button, and it's going to produce a report. Now, the first part of this, it says show evidence of the search screen. So all we've got to do is produce a basic form. We don't need to make everything work and we don't need to have all the drop down boxes working fully, uh, etc. We don't need to have the buttons working. Uh, we've got to follow the same house style as the data entry screen. So we could take this, uh, sorry, as the, uh, yeah, as the data entry screen, we could just take this, okay, save as, but it's going to be a bit awkward because it's based on the instructor table. So the easiest thing to do is to create a new form design. Go back to your lesson, uh, your instructor form, look at that in design view, and we'll copy okay, the title. And so we're at least following now the same house style, but this time it's going to be called uh, Find Instructors. So we'll do that. Before we carry on, we'll save our form and we'll call it Find Instructors. That makes sense. We could call it Search Screen, anything. Now we need to have some uh, text boxes on here for the things that we're going to fill in. So it asks us for the minimum and maximum charge that the learner is willing to pay per hour. So we're just going to put on some text boxes for putting these in. It's not the fields. We're not getting these fields from the database. The user is going to be typing this data in. So this first one is going to be the minimum charge. And then we're going to have another one that will be called the maximum charge. So we'll put those two on. So these are hourly charges. So I'm actually going to change that to be per hour. I'll just pull that out a bit. And we can pull this one out as well. And we can put on our per hour on there as well. Uh, we need to know whether or not weekend lessons are required. Right, well, that's going to be a tick box. So up here at the top, we'll choose a tick box option. There it is. Just create a tick box. Yeah, and I'm just going to change the, take the title there into the other side so that it's all lined up with everything else. And we'll call that Weekends. So next we need to have a drop down box which is going to tell us what gender we want our instructor to be, whether we want it to be male, female or any. Uh, so we need to find our drop down box option here. Draw the drop down box onto the screen. And then we choose here what we're going to do. Now we're not going to find them in another table or query. We need to type in the values that we want. So we click on next and we can now put in our values here. Now we can't just put in male because there are no instructors with the gender male. What we've actually used is M and F. We can put any here but it's going to make things a little bit more complicated when it comes to processing the data later if any is selected. What we're actually going to do is put a second column in and we're going to put in here male and female and any. 
but we're going to put in column one star now star is a wild card that means you can literally have any value in that field so we're going to have the values that we're going to use will be m f and star so we click on next it now says which field do we want to use uh, to to link to that uh, control um, source so we're going to go for column one which is the M, F and star. And we'll put in here, select gender. And that's an instruction saying, but we want to select the gender. Now we just need to tidy it up a little bit and have a look at what this will look like when it's run. And you can see at the moment, it's still showing that M, F and star, but we don't really want showing. Well, that's easily solved. If we double click on this, it will show us the properties and where we've got column widths, we're going to change the first column to be zero centimeters. So that means that it will be hidden. And now watch what happens. There we go. Male, female, any. But it's actually storing M, F or star as what we've chosen. We'll just go back to our design view. And now we can move on to the next bit. Then we need to look at this next criteria, which is the minimum number of hours of lessons that the learner wants to have per week. What's the, the least number of hours they'd be happy with? So we'll draw a text box on there. And that's going to be our minimum hours per week. And we'll just move that across again so that it fits in. Now, as we go along, it tells us that it needs to uh, list the number of instructors. So that's the criteria selected. The number of instructors that would meet these criteria needs to be displayed. Well, let's just have a look at what we mean by this. If we go to the instructor table, if we selected only female instructors, then that would reduce okay, our eligible instructors to this set. If we said that we wanted a uh, charge that was between £15 and £17, then we wouldn't have all of these and we would need to have between 15 and 17. You'll notice that 18 will disappear from our list. And if we said that we wanted minimum number of hours Okay, so I'm going to say that it's got to be uh, greater or equal to, let's say I said a minimum number of three hours a week. So greater or equal to three. You can see this reducing. And if I said it's got to be somebody who teaches weekends, then we would only have these instructors. So what's happening is as we go through and select our criteria from here, the minimum charges, the week, maximum charge, the weekends, the gender, and the minimum number of hours per week. The number of instructors that will match those criteria reduces. And we can see here that there would be four. What we're going to do is we're just going to put a text box on for now uh, that will, if we go back to design, and we go there's a text box. And this text box is just going to be ready for when we put that value in and when we calculate how many instructors there are. Okay, so I'm going to call this number of suitable instructors. I'll drag that across here. Now, okay, I, you know, I'm not going to move all of these uh, whilst you're watching a video, but you can see that if you were doing it, you'd need to tidy this up a little bit more. We also need a button that is going to find the suitable instructors. So I'm going to put a button on there. The button's not going to do much at this stage. It's just going to be a blank rectangle. Okay, so I'm actually going to cancel out of this. And I'm going to rename it, find suitable instructors. So the button doesn't do anything. But that's fine because all we've got to do is show evidence of the search screen. So if we look at that, I can now do a screenshot of this search screen and that will fulfill 3D part one. 
will make the rest of it work as we work through this task. So in preparation for that, we need to make sure that all of our text boxes and tick boxes and combo boxes are named properly because we're going to need to make reference to them. So although we've given them a label like minimum charge per hour, I also need to name them. So here, for example, I could call this min charge. We could call this one max charge. Now notice I've selected the properties. Okay, so we went to properties. I've then gone to all, and this is where we're doing it. So I'm gonna call this one, this is a weekend check. So WE check. This one's gonna be a gender combo box. So I'll just call it gender combo. This one's gonna be a minimum number of hours. And this one's gonna be a number of instructors. Now it's important that we label those so that we're not referring to them as they were as text one, text two, check one, combo one. So then that completes 3D part one. You can then move on to do the other parts bit by bit as we go along.